Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. We've got a cool little hover effect for you today. We've got three little blurb modules here. When I hover over, the icon's going to jump up to the top and the content's going to fade in. That's going to get people's attention pretty quickly. Same with these two here. And we've got sort of different amounts of text in here because we've given our little modules a fixed height. So you can have different amounts of text and they'll remain a similar height. And if people are mousing around your site, this sort of thing happens, it's going to get their attention pretty quickly, which is exactly what you want with a website. Really easy to do, so let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. Okay, once enabled, let's go down. Let's add another row just below this one. Little green button to add a new row. I'm going to throw three columns in mine once more. And funnily enough, we're going to use a little blurb module, one of my favorite modules. We've done a whole video just on the blurb module because it's so versatile. Check out our playlist for that. Okay, title wise, I'm going to leave it just as it is. Content wise, I'm going to leave it just as it is. Of course, this is a wiggy, WYSIWYG content section. You can bold, italicize, add bullet lists, numbered lists, links, block quotes, add media, and titles if you want to. I'm going to leave mine all exactly just as it is there. Okay, image and icon just below. I'm going to switch mine for an icon. So I'm going to hit this little switch right here. Let's go down and find us a little icon to put in. Let's just add a question mark. That's great. In the background, I'm going to give mine a dark background color. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to use my 24, 24, 24 gray. That seems to work for me in a lot of situations. That icon stands out nicely. Let's get our text to stand out nicely too. So if we go over to design now, design tab at the top, go into text, it'll align both the title and the content there at the same time. And we can flip it from dark to light so we can actually see it. Of course, you can go down below if you want to and edit these separately, title text and body text. And of course, Divi's got a huge amount of fonts to choose from. To audition one, just roll over it. It'll give you an example. I'm going to leave mine on the default today. Okay, I want to give this a bit of breathing room all around. So still in the design tab, I'm going to close up that title text where we were. I'm going to go down to spacing. I'm going to get 20 pixels all around. I'm just going to put in the 20. It'll put in the pics. Hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side. And we'll do the same for left and right. Now, while we're in design, I'm going to go into sizing. I'm going to give this a fixed height. So it doesn't matter how much content we've got in there. It'll all remain the same height. So I've gone into sizing under the design tab. I think I'm going to make this perhaps 400 made it a little bit taller. Let's just check it on tablet and mobile. To do that, and this is common to all Divi modules, sections and rows, if you hover over the dark writing, you'll see some little icons pop up. There's a little mobile phone type icon there. We can have different settings for desktop, tablet and mobile. So I'm going to hit tablet view. A little bit short, that's one, two, three, maybe have 350 on tablet. It's a guess. Of course, adjust to taste. Now let's have a look on phone by clicking on the little phone icon here. And again, I think we'll have 400 on the phone there. Perfect. And if we go back to desktop, we should have 400 there also. Roll on down to where we were. Great. Okay, well, let's start making this thing do our hover effect. First thing I want it to do is that little icon. When we hover over, I want this icon to pop up to the top here. I don't want to see any content initially. That only wants to appear when we hover over it. So before I go any further, I'm going to save what I've got going on here. I'm going to save the page changes and exit the Visual Builder. I'm going to go down. I want to find out the class name of our little icon there so we can target it specifically to make it do one thing or we can make our paragraph text do something else. So to do that, once we're out of the builder, I'm going to right click 
I'm going to inspect. I'm using Google Chrome here with the inspector tools. And if you hover over it, you can see it's lining up the area that we've got selected there. Bit I want is class name of ET dash PB icon. Now anywhere, these are all class names and it's fine to have multiple class names. Anywhere there's a gap, that's the start of a new class name, new class name. What I want is ET PB icon. Now I'm using Google Chrome here with the great inspector tools, as I mentioned. Most browsers have this nowadays, but if yours doesn't, Chrome is a free download. I'm going to double left click on this. It'll select all of them. And I'm going to put my cursor just to the left of the class name that I want there. I'm going to copy it, control C. Great. We can go back into our builder now. We'll roll on there. So we now have the class name for that. Let's go into the module itself. We're going to create our hover effects using some CSS. I'm going to go over to the advanced and the custom CSS there. We're going to use the freeform CSS tab that we've been using in the last couple of videos. Okay, to target this blurb module, all I need to write is selector. But I want to target the actual icon within this module. So to do that, I need to put a dot because we're using a class name. And then the class name that we just copied, ETPB icon. Then we can open and close some curly brackets. We can tell it exactly what we want it to do. Well, I want to shift this up so it's almost halfway above right there. So I'm going to say margin top. I'm going to say perhaps negative 100 pixels. So I'll put a colon there. Now I'm going to put negative 100 px. Great. And that's pulled that icon up to where I want it right there. It's also pulled that text up. I really want the text to pretty much stay where it is. I don't mind if it bounces a bit when we hover over it, but I want it to be back down, similar place to where it was. So let's put a semicolon there. I'm going to drop down that closing curly bracket there. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to drop down one, Control C to copy, Control V to paste. I'm going to change that from margin top to margin bottom. Now we'll try plus 100 pixels. I think that's a little bit too far down. I think what I used before was about 73. Obviously, adjust yours to taste. There we go. That's about right. Now we've got our icon poking out the top there. And we got our text pretty much where it was before. But of course, I only want this to happen when they hover over it. I don't want it to just happen when they hover over the icon. I want it to happen when they hover over the full module. So after selector right here, right where the R is with no gap, I'm going to put a colon in there and the word hover, H-O-V-E-R. We've just created a hover state now. So when I hover over, as you can see, it's jumping way up there. Fantastic. Just exactly what I wanted. Now that's okay, but it's doing it pretty much instantly. I'd like to slow it down so it sort of slides up there for a bit of grace. So what we can do is we'll drop down again. I'm going to copy this class name here. The selector and the icon. I'm going to get rid of our hover effect there by selecting the colon and the hover and hitting delete. I'm going to open some more curly brackets at the end so we can tell it what we want it to do. Now I'm going to give it a transition duration, transition dash duration, colon. I'm going to give mine about half a second. So it's going to take half a second to get up where it wants to be. And that's 0.5s. Now let's try it. That's better. As you can see, it's actually sliding up there and taking half a second. And our little title there is bouncing up a little bit as it's adjusting for margin bottom and top there. But I don't mind that at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have this content not be there. And then fade in. A little slower perhaps than our icons going up there. So to do that, we know this text is paragraph text. So it's just P. So if I go down again. And I say selector. 
we've selected that module, that verb module. Now P, we've selected that paragraph text. So let's open and close some more curly brackets. And the first thing I want to do is make that invisible. Let's just uncheck it. So to make it invisible, I'm going to say opacity is the amount you can see of it. If I put it down to zero, it'll be totally invisible. So I'm going to put a zero after the colon there. Perfect. So we just got our title and our icon initially. But of course, we want to bring this content back when we hover over it. I want the content to fade back in. So I'm going to do a similar thing as we did above. I'm going to select our selector P all the way to that closing curly bracket there. Control C to copy. Drop down one more. This time when we hover over the module, not just the text, we could do it just for the text, but we want it anywhere that they hover over this module. I want this text to come in there. So we're doing do the same thing as we did above. Colon after the R with no gap. And the word hover after the colon with no gap. Created a hover state. I want an opacity of one, which is fully visible. Now when I hover over it, see that deck, that text is turning up. But again, it's turning up very quickly. I want it to slow down. I want it to fade in either a similar speed as that icon's moving up there or an even slower speed so the icon moves up, then the text fades in. Now to do that, I'm going to use a transition duration again. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to drop down just below our opacity on the regular state, not on the hover state. We need to put this in the regular state. I'm going to paste it in there, control V. And let's make this perhaps one second. I kind of like that. That works for me. You could even take it up a bit slower if you wanted to, and you'll notice when it fades back in. If we do this now, second and a half, it's going to fade out a lot more slowly. That's pretty cool. I like that. Great. So everything seems to be working just as I want it now. We've just got the icon and the title. When we hover over, the content's going to roll in, and that little icon's going to pop up the top. Perfect. When that icon goes at the top, though, it's just a little bit close to our ones above. So let's just say what we've got in our blurb settings here. I'm going to go into the row. I'm going to give this row just a little bit more padding so there's more gap between it and the blurb modules above. So I'm going to go into design and spacing. All right, 50 picks, what does that do? That pushes it down a little bit more. Yep, yeah, that's going to work for me. I'm just going to save that. Now, of course, to duplicate this and put different content in, you know exactly what to do. Just hover over it, hit the two little squares to duplicate module. Drag one across, doesn't matter which one. Obviously, you're going to want to change out your icon in there. Content. Well, we want to change out the title also and some of this content. I'll take some away just so you can see that the different amounts of text won't affect the height there. And we'll switch out this icon. And we'll do the same for this one next door. Clone it, drag one across, doesn't matter which one. We'll go in there. We'll add a bit more text to this one. Let's just throw a little bit more in it. That's fine. And we'll switch out that icon. Perfect. We should be all done. I'm going to save that. I'm going to save my page changes here. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the visual builder. There's the ones we had initially. Here's our new ones that we've added. When I hover over, that icon's going to pop up the top and the content's going to pop in. And it'll work anywhere that you hover over this module. Perfect. Same for our one next door. Got less text in this one. As you can see, it's got less text than this one. But we've still got the same height. And finally, for this one, it's got a little bit more text than the other two. And that is a really striking little thing. I do love these blurb modules. They are fantastic fun to use. You can do all kinds of things with them. But this sort of thing, like I say, if they're mousing around your site, 
it's going to get their interest pretty quickly. Now, the question I always get is how are these going to work on tablet and mobile? Well, they will work on tablet and mobile. I probably have separate ones for tablet and mobile, even though we've done the height on this. So if I hit my F12 key, I hit my little responsive devices there on our inspector tools. Let's take it down and let's have a look at it on an iPad, perhaps. I mean, they look fine, but they're not going to know to click on them. They've actually got to tap on them. Once you tap on them, it's going to do its thing. So you could add a little bit, a little bit of text, perhaps. Just that shows up on tablet and mobile. If I flip to mobile. Got an iPhone 12 there. As you can see, it's going to work perfectly on mobile as well. Now, if you do want to act, just add a little line of text that shows up just on tablet and mobile, we could put one up the top here. I'll show you exactly how to do that. Let's enable the Visual Builder once more. I'm going to add a new row. I'm going to make it a single column. I'm going to put a text module in. We'll find that down at the bottom. Anybody's wondering those light blue ones there, these blue ones. All part of DB Supreme modules, which is a fantastic plugin. And we've got a whole playlist about that down below. Let's add a text module. And yeah, we'll say tap on module for more info. I'm going to put that in the middle. Okay, I'm going to put it out on the top of some. Hit the across there, drag it up to the top. Now, of course, I don't really want to see that on tablet and mobile. So let's go into our row, advanced and visibility, disable on desktop. So we're only going to see that on tablet and phone. And it's grayed it out a little bit on desktop here just to let us know it's there. So we'll save that now. We'll resave the page changes. We'll exit the Visual Builder. And the first thing you're going to notice is there's no tap now to learn more because it's a hover effect. It'll automatically happen when we put our mouse on it on desktop. If I bring my Chrome Inspector back up, it should automatically go to Phone View. There we are on phone, and the first thing you're going to notice there's a title underneath. We've got tap on module for more information. And if we go to iPad view, we'll have a similar thing. Roll up the top there. Tap on module for more information. Perfect. If we go back to regular view, it's gone. There's a little workaround for anybody that wants to use these hover effects on their tablet and mobile. Like I say, they will work perfectly. People just have to tap on them. And of course, they'll have to know that they have to tap on them. So that's why we put that in. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video just like this one. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.